Amber Wilson here with Roger Craig. Roger, first things first, I'm a little disappointed that you've won a few of those rings and you don't even have one on to show us. Well, they're they're a little heavy, you know, and uncomfortable, and I, I didn't want to take a chance of losing them while I was down while, while I was down here. And uh, there's always a place to put trophies, and and I've elected to put my tro my rings in a safe deposit box. A lot of players like to wear them just for attention. I just I don't want to bring that attention to m to myself. Yeah, I've been seeing them around here all week. So you don't even have them displayed at your house or anything. No, they're 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 in a safe deposit box in a safe spot. You know, uh, I wore them to my kids. So basically, when I'm gone, they have a ring, a memory of what I've accomplished, you know, which they're going to really like. Maybe they'll wear them. Maybe they'll embrace the Liberace Definitely. look. <laughs> you told me earlier you never missed a playoffs 11 straight years. That's really incredible. Do you get desensitized to it at that point? Do you just expect every year to make it? Well, you know, I've just been on some great teams um, and uh, a lot of luck. Um, and then being with players that understand about team concept, and that's that's my whole makeup as an athlete uh, from high school, which I never missed a playoff in high school. Uh, when I went to Nebraska, I played two Orange Bowl and uh, Cotton Bowl and um, uh, Sun Bowl, so that's like playoffs, you know. And as a professional with the 49ers, uh, you know, I'm, I played in eight consecutive uh, uh, playoffs as well as I went to when I went to the uh, – with the Raiders, I played one year with them and two with the Vikings. So out of all those teams, I never missed a playoff. And maybe um, I'm a good luck charm. Yeah, you, you were on some very incredible teams. You had a lot of great guys around you as well. Let's talk about these two teams and this matchup on Sunday as compared to the matchups that you went through and the three that you that you won. Well, you know, I like Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I really think that the, the momentum has definitely uh, went to another level especially when they beat the Ravens. Um, they, their defense really matched up, you know, well against them. And, um, you know, uh, they're going for number six, you know, which can separate them from all the other players, uh, other franchises like myself with the 49ers and uh, Cowboys and I think somebody else, uh, I want to say Green Bay or uh, my, Green Bay. yeah. Back. Back, back back when, yeah, when. back when, yeah. Exactly. So they can separate themselves with being the first franchise to have six rings, you know. So I think that's a motive, and um, um, and then with with you know uh, Arizona, hey, they can make history as well, you know. So um, you know, Kirk Warner played there before, you know, he's been in Super Bowls before, and he is the MVP of one. And um, I think what they need to do is be really careful. Pittsburgh as far as you know if they blitz you know because Kirk Warner is really good at uh, disguising knowing when they're going to blitz and getting rid of the ball you know so I think with his style of play is going to make Pittsburgh play a little honest and 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 with the honestly the honestly um, um, of, of Pittsburgh Steelers they you know they're going to have to have better resources as far as uh, the special teams going to have to step it up. You know, Holmes going to really have to, Antonio Holmes going to really have to step it up and make the difference. I think he's the X factor of the Super Bowl is Antonio Holmes. But you like Pittsburgh overall, so an yeah, offensive okay. guy picking the defensive squad? I kind of like Pittsburgh because they, they have more players than they've been, they've been here before as well as Kirk Warner, but Kirk Warner only had like four or five guys on this team. So it's kind of hard to really describe what it feels like to be in a Super Bowl or what to expect, you know, when – you're a veteran guy that know how to relax, know how to not be distracted uh, from the excitement or, or, or just be happy to be here. You know, Pittsburgh, is, they, they kind of have um, a, a motivation, you know, of why they're here and they want to win it, you know, not just be happy that we made it. And I think that's Arizona might fall into that category. A lot of the players are young. They might feel, oh, we made it, you know, that's about it. But there's another level you have to take your game to another level, and I think Pittsburgh understands that level. You keep mentioning Kurt Warner. Would you put him in the Hall of Fame, or would it depend on whether he's able to win this ring on Sunday? Well, since he's a, since he's an Iowa boy, yes. <laughs> I, I consider him a Hall of Famer, you know, uh, being able to take a team that no one thought he could do, and in, they're in the Super Bowl, you know, and he already won one Super Bowl, had two MVPs, and you know, he, he deserved, you know, a shot, you know, to be in the Hall of Fame. I, I think he's definitely got the credential, credentials to make it happen. All right, going back to your three again, you win one. It's got to be one of the one of the best moments, I would I would think, of your life or certainly of your career. You win the second one, probably still up there 
maybe not quite as impacting as the first by the third one I mean how does that you know how, how do you keep that feeling every time if you're just winning Super Bowls most people never even get to win one over the last three well you know my first Super Bowl is my most memorable one because I scored three touchdowns and we beat the Dolphins um, and at that time Dan Marino put up some great numbers he threw over 5,000 yards um, he threw like 48 touchdown passes and his rating was off the charts and um, we weren't expected to win but uh, we, we came out and uh, we made it happen you know and I was, that's where I, I guess I got my my exposure you know uh, scoring the three touchdowns and you know prime time everyone the world's watching and you know and I think people knew who you were so, before that so but you know I think I stepped it up I, I stepped up to the plate and then our my second Super Bowl um, that was that was exciting too because you know we played against Cincinnati Bengals and it was almost like the story like like uh, Arizona, we were 10 and six, we weren't expected to be there. And we rode the momentum all the way into the Super Bowl until we, you know, and, and we, we won the last minute with, with three minutes left on the, on, on the, on the clock with, with the move the ball 94 yards down the field, you know, to win. So that was an exciting year for us. It was a trying year for us and it's more of a lot of adversity throughout the year that, and we, we overcame that. So that was a, a special moment as well, you know, to be able to, to be able to overcome adversity and to, um, you know, win the biggest games on the stage uh, as, you know, the Super Bowl, you know, it was, it was incredible. And the third? The third one was, really wasn't the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, we beat, the, uh, we beat uh, Denver 55 to 10. It, the game was over at halftime. You know, I, I was eating, Popcorn. That's good though, because by then you probably didn't want to have to work as hard for it, right? <laughs> well, you know, you kind of you kind of want the game to end like Super Bowl 23. You know, that's what people pay their money for. You know, you want two, you know, conferences to you know to win at the last seconds uh, of uh, of the game, and and that's what you know fans look forward to. You know, exciting finishing, not. The game being over at halftime, you're up 35 to seven at halftime. You know, game is over. <laughs> it cha changing channels, you know. But I don't want to say that because my my friend is, um, you know, John Elway, and he's my partner on Open Sports and all. But you know, but you know, that was a bad year for him. I felt bad for him. <laughs> at least he made it to the Super Bowl. That's you know. He made it to the Super Bowl. He did make it to the Super Bowl, and then. He was able to win two in the 90s, which you know, which is kind of awesome that we're doing the coin toss together um, uh, Sunday um, with, with you know Lynn, uh, Lynn Swan. Basically, we have three different decades of, of of greatness. You know, Lynn Swan in the 70s, and I'm representing the 80s decade, and then John Elway's representing the 90s decade, which is it's a great honor to be in that class. But just in the class of being able to do the coin toss when you, when presidents has, have done that, you know, so um, it's going to be a great stage. I'm looking forward to it. So John got over the butt whooping that you gave him then. You guys get along now? <laughs> oh, well, I'm good friends with John anyway. I, I, I say if John was in our offense, he'd probably be the greatest quarterback of, of all time. He would have won four or five Super Bowls. <laughs> all right. So if I had to make you get, to make, you, you might know, how many Super Bowls have you been to then overall? And not just as a, as a player, but, you know, just coming down to the parties and the events. And do you come every year? Yeah, I, I come every year. Uh, we bring customers. Um, it's always good to, you know, to reunite with, with, with former players and uh, seeing the new players, you know, and um, – it's, it's, it's good to just, you know, network with the NFL, you know, because, you know, the NFL has changed so much. You got all these interactive things, you know, you got like social networking, um, you know, sports, you know, you know, websites like, you know, opensports.com, you got ESPN.com, you got all these different, you know, networks you know, that people are involved in. So the game has changed, you know, technology has changed and, and it's, it's kind of fun to see. The, uh, people are saying that this year, compared to the past few years, that Super Bowl 43 and the fanfare around it is a little bit down and scaled back. Are you noticing that? Yeah, I am. You know, uh, companies are pulling out. Corporate companies are, are scaling back, and uh, it's it's kind of like you know everyone's you know afraid of the economy, what what's ahead of us. But you know, I, I think it's it, it, it's it's a bad thing for the Super Bowl. But uh, I think that's what business need to do is kind of scale back and, and, and get a good business model and figure out, you know, where they're going for the future. Because no one no one knows what's happening right now with our economy. So, you know, the main thing is everyone wants to just, you know, make sure they're 
uh, you know, their uh, revenue is going to be, be there for them. Well, I'm sure you'll still manage to have some fun tonight. Thank you so much, Roger. Oh, my